Hello YouTube, Drake Clawfang here. First off, sorry about part 8. As I said in the description, I had the volume up on my emulator to test something for the hack and forgot to turn the volume back down. So when not when uh whether well, the uh, recorder I used open broadcast software OBS recorded it recorded it lowered the temper the sound of my voice to record the game predominantly but not going to happen again for a very good reason audacity it is recording a separate audio track of just me so that's not gonna happen again like I said live and learn live and learn uh, well, it's, it's for, really, I think it's for the best, because I wanted to do a, have, have separate tracks for the game's music, the game sounds, and my voice all along. It's just that OBS doesn't record that, but now if I have Audacity, I can do that. You know, and I can manipulate the volume levels uh, separately anyway. So, so, you know, slightly more complicated, but I'll manage. You didn't miss too much in the commentary that was in the footnotes, so just me talking about how I handled the enemies of the facility, giving them magic and balancing them and all that, and talking about uh, story things with the original game, The Empire, having magic or not. But yeah, but we're back now. We're moving past it. Part 9. Escaping the Empire. Uh-oh. What are my levels? I don't know my levels. Okay, whew! On another note, I have been, I've downloaded the Dissidia NT open beta. I'll, if you liked the original Dissidia and thought, hey, I want this to be bigger and flashier and more action-packed than ever, you're gonna be pretty happy, I think. It just occurred to me, I never changed my, my Magisite last time. Wow, I'll just think of all the magic points I missed out on. I suck. Eh... Well, looking at the spell list, I didn't miss that much, actually. I think I'd prefer Celestia to have Remedy right now. And Firefly. Arrow. That can be replaced. Anyway. Moving right along. We run here. And here is Rainbow Dash. Come on, let's go. Do, 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 do. I love this music. You can run, but you can't hide. And then out of nowhere, these cranes. Why are these a boss? Like, why can't the party just fly away? I don't know. I have so many questions. Why can... Are the queens here, and can why can they cast magic? Come on. Here we go. Well, uh, f the first thing I should guess I should talk about here is Rainbow Dash's mug. She does still have mug, um, mostly because there's just no one that can... That, there's no ability that really suits it, you know? Like, slot has to go to someone. But so, you know, Rainbow, sure, she's, you know, the brash whisk taker. Uh, rebalanced, of course, you know, with, uh... Yeah, some of the powers changing and some I think I made a couple of them physical because she's the biggest eye relying on strength. In particular, Lagomorph also cures silence and blind and poison, I believe and I think that's all it changes. But um and it has stronger so you know the it's actually not too bad as a healing spell. Wow. The thing I always remember with this fight is that, you know, the cranes, they don't have much HP compared to the bosses that came before, but they have really strong ma magic attacks. So I remember, like, a, like look at that. 2100. So when I was a kid, like, 
This fight can either be really easy or really hard, depending on how you tackle it and what they feel like attacking with. Yes, yes, let's get there. I don't know much to say over this part. Let's get to the stuff I can talk over. I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned before, if I didn't, I mentioned now that when the Magicite flashes here, there were some flashing effects that happened with Terra in the original game. But Twilight uses a different palette than Terra, so I had to do some minor event editing to make her glow properly. It's a lot of minor, very minor things like that, you know, like small details that unless you look at the scenes back to back, you wouldn't realize. But I have to go in and fix them. World. And here we meet Twilight's mother, based on the G1 Twilight. Not exactly, obviously it's just a palette swap of Twilight, but that's the point, with the pink coat and the white and purple hair. Let's run around and talk to people. Yeah, you know, welcome to uh, what it was. It, what was it in the G1 cartoon, Ponyland? Yeah, that, that, that's the head cannon. I'm, I'm gonna establish right now. This is the G1 world. So, Princess Dazzle Glow. Fun story. When I was looking was looking at G1, I've never watched the G1 cartoon. Like, I've seen, like, clips of it on YouTube and that. You know, I've seen the Smooth song. I've seen some of the T-Rex and Grogar stuff. But I've never actually watched a G1 cartoon. So I had to research the various G1 ponies to cast as espers. And it occurred to me, you know, the esper elder should be the leader. Could be a princess, an alicorn. But I'm like, well, are there any alicorns in G1? So I had to research it. And apparently there was an alicorn in G1 mostly out of a writer's oversight. There's an episode where the group's balloon, uh, the group is flying in a balloon and it starts to crash or something. And in the script they're saved by a bunch of pegasi ponies who s repair the b balloon with magic. And a someone on the animation team noticed, well, hang on, I thought only unicorns can use magic. How about Pegasi using magic? So she said, well, okay, one of the Pegasi is also a unicorn. And she drew one of the, um, one of the th th four Pegasi that saved the group. One of them, Dazzle Guru, was given a horn. So, due to right oversight and the animators trying to compensate, we have an, that's the, one of the, the only instance I could find, at least, of an alicorn, or rather a winged unicorn in G1. So Dazzle Guru is here as the princess. And okay, we've talked to everyone, let's go back and talk to him once again. I do find it funny that, you know, this... Let him rest. No, out of my way, I want to talk to him now. And she just walks away, fine, do whatever you want. So that is something I kind of gloss over, because there's not too much room to fit in the story. Now, the backstory is that, um... Nightlight was married to Twilight Velvet, or whatever you want to call Twilight's mom in this continuity. But she, and they had shining armor, but she died and then he met the G1 Twilight here. And, well, I'm sure you can imagine what happens here. There, oh, I did fit it in. I'm smarter than I thought. I never got to the original game either, the, Esper, the Elder slash Princess spying on them. I 
And that's also the thing that not, never made sense to me in the original game, like they express the surprise, like a human made it all to the all the way to the gate, and like why not? You know, like walk to the gate, it's like what, fifteen feet away? Just walk there. And we wanna know how they made it past the guard, you know? And, uh, this is the part that I always feel so awkward about. What exactly is happening here? You know? Is this as close to, you know, well, let's be honest. We know what's happening. Is this how they choose to depict it? You know, like in the original game. Does Mardoon start flying around with sparkles with Madeline, and they have sex in front of the gate or something? And there's little baby Twily. Ponies! The summon call of the brony fandom. And this and the and it's where they say they made it to the elder's house. No, they haven't, they just came here. And there's Samba with an awesome new sprite from Idol Fox. His sprite in version 1.0 was uh, just a heavily modified Pony Fantasy VI Imperial Trooper sprite. That's why the head was so big and round and wide. Because it was their helmet. Also, I just, like, honestly, Dazzle Glow is a good name for a princess. I will note that the princess here looks, actually, the sprite here actually looks nothing like that really like Dazzle Glow as she appeared in the G1 cartoon. But, you know, I have lim pal limited palette swaps of the three princesses to work with, so I went with the one that looks the least unlike her. It still doesn't look anything like her, but it looks more like her than some of the alternatives, you know? The downside of Vital Fox giving some of the party sprite shading is that when you palette swap them, like I have to sometimes, you can see where the shading turns a different color on their limbs and now Dazzle Glow has a red body with odd blue random pixels around her. Yeah, yeah, you did kind of screw the pooch, Twilight. The thing that I always thought I thought of when I got older, I'm like, wait a second, the sealed gate is in the middle of this huge magma-filled cave. How did Madeline, a normal human, make it through that cave? You know, that's not something like you stumble across. As he says, as he's, you know, I went out for a walk and I decided to explore this cave full of undead skeletons and demons, and I found you. Twily! Nightlight! And again, uh, this is a more substantive scene edit, so that instead of being struck down by Gestal as Madeline was, Nightlight is able to escape with baby Twily. That is the problem though with the screen um uh the screen shaking it's hard to tell that Samba like you know had his head down and then lifted his head when he stood up there. 
And the thing I'm particularly proud of is that I was able to fit all that in the same amount of data as the original scene where Gestalt strikes down Madeline. So I didn't have to do any event jumps to blank spots in the data to fit extra event coding or anything. Efficiency is something I very much appreciate. <laughs> that scene that was sort of the last little thing that doesn't make sense to me in the original game. You know, they're talking like, wait a minute, the Espers captured during that expedition are the ones in the Magitech research facility. Salas was power came at the expense of an Esper, and it's like, you're only just now realizing that, you know? Where did you think her magic came from? Did it not click for you? When you were told that this is where the Empire gets its magic? Yeah, well, okay. I think we're okay. Do So there are... Some side quests now to do, but first we will come back to Nash. And I uh, always awkward the god stops like and always obviously stops under the awning. And Sakura and her rhyming are back. And in the original game, they say your plan would have all like, when did the party come up with this plan spontaneously? What have Zakora and or Bannon and the mayor and Arvis and the Return has been doing? And suddenly Terra's here. My plot important sense was tingling. It's up to you, Twily. Something I do find interesting is, um, you know, when you really think about it, the Waterners used Terra as the same way the Empire did. You know, they used to, wanted to use her as a living weapon and communicate with Espers to get help from the Espers. They, you know, they did it peacefully, of course, but there was still sort of coercion there. You know, like, for all we know, this is some sort of total recall thing where Terra was a willing member of the Empire until Kefka enslaved her for this expedition. Like, wouldn't that be an interesting plot twist? If Terra was a willing member of the Empire, and then, uh, then she got brainwashed and converted to the Returners and that? Biorod. We'll take it. I'm trying to think of the party members I'm going to take. I want to take Luna, because she was sitting that out. Rainbow Dash needs magic. Yeah, so let's suit up for Luna, Rainbow. You know, maybe I should actually get them in the party before I do this. Oh, and if you need to rest in the, in the bed in the back of the weapon shop you were just in, you can rest there. And this is where you can really see, uh, tell how Flash is just a heavily modified Scootaloo sprite. Luna, wait, Dashy. Uh, I kind of want to bring Scootaloo too, but you know, I, I only have so many party members. 
And our fourth slot is taken. Let's go get her before I do anything else. So, I've always wondered, because I've never played through the game without doing this. Like, I've always wondered what happens if you don't skip this part and go to recruit this character in the World of Ruin. But, you know, I've never done it. So... So in version, uh, in an early beta, uh, this character coming up was going to be played by Lightning Dust. But instead, it's Trixie to increase her presence in the game a bit, you know, give her a bit more to do. But yeah, in, in, an early, in the early beta, it was Lightning Dust. And this is before I released the playable beta, you know, like, I mean, like, when I was first working again, I'm like, yeah, it's going to be lightning dust, and you can actually see a remnant of that. One of the Pegasus NPC sprites is obviously lightning dust, a teal-ish Pegasus with, orange, with an orange mane. And that was supposed to be the lightning dust sprite used for that character there. But uh, at a certain, nah. I kept think, trying to think of ways, like, how could I fit lightning dust in somewhere else? But, come on, let's see her. Come on. There she is, there's Maud. And again, some minor event editing I had to do for version 2.0 because Umaro uses some animation sprites there that, like, his, I think, like, I don't know what, if they're grimacing or his angry sprite, but he uses them that Maud doesn't have anymore because she's not a party member, so she has a more limited sprite with a smaller range of expression, so I had to do some editing there. <laughs> you know, when you, when you think about it, like, Trixie slash Lone Wolf wasn't that smart, like, running into town and eventually getting cornered. And there's a uh, pink amina. So the trick here is do nothing, just wait. And here we go. Fun! So, so apparently some people actually have a problem with this choice because the gold hairpin is a very rare relic that has MP costs. To those people I say, what the hell? You're gonna let Best Pony fall to her death? No. Party loving and fast talking. She knows no higher joy than making others smile! Pinky. Well, it's about time you found me. I wanted to join at the start of the game, but the hacker didn't know how to do that. Uh, it, like, people are actually, like, taking that joke. I'm like, is he serious? Did he actually want to make Pinky join the party earlier, but he didn't know how to? N not really. No. I had no plans for that. That's just Pinky breaking the fourth wall and, you know, giving a little hand wave, hoof wave why she didn't join Flash and the other group at the beginning at earlier in the game when you visit her several times. Now, hypothetically speaking, when, really, when you, when you look at some of the other ROM hacks that people have made of FS6, my hack is very, very small in scope and ambition. Like, the one guy made basically made an entire Gaiden game focusing on Biggs and Wedge, where the Esper didn't kill them, it teleported them away, and they explore the ancient castle and fight a necromancer and rescue this woman from her and apparently later in the hack they return to Vector and get Magitech confusions and start learning magic. But yeah, um, so my hack was small in ambition, but it is fully possible to... it would be fully possible to make Maud join the party earlier in the game, like 
if you say in a terrorist scenario. But it'd be a big pain in the ass, because again, you figure every time Mog is in the field, you have to program in things for him to do. When you speak to him aboard the airship, when you speak to him in Arvis's house, up there, you have to program in something for him to say. You have to give him dialogue for when you speak to him at the opera. You have to put him into the scene in Griffinstone where they're leaving the tower and talk chatting. Yeah, again, when you when you really look at it, I actually realize, yeah, there's a lot I could do, but uh, do I really want to put in that effort? You know, and and also that's. It, I don't think I don't think it's really that critical, you know. Why doesn't Pinky join earlier in the game? Why does it matter? You know. Okay, so she's here now, though. This is where you can see that save um thing I mentioned, where pilots don't show up properly on the save screen. You can see that with Applejack and Pinky having uh, the white spots because their pilots aren't loading properly on this screen. Oh, we'll get Pinky suited up. Pinky's exclusive weapons are tricks. And instead of uh, the Vigor boost that Earth Pony Claws get, she gets a magic boost because her unique party skills are all magical abilities. So now, we're gonna go into town and suit her up. And suit everyone up, really. I wanted to get Pinky so I can do all four of them at once. Well, first... Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that. Leave that, you know, it teaches fire too. Uh, steel lance, wing pike, we don't need. Someone reminded me that by taking that in Pinky's cave, I cheated myself out of a ribbon later in the game, and I'm like, no! Oh well. Steel claw. Mm, nah. No, no, you don't want that, don't want that. Honestly, I'm just like so damn rich. I'm gonna sell everything, scrap everything, start from. Sc How did I get four bio blasters? Oh yeah, the enemies in the Magitech research facility dropped them. Never mind. I know what happened. Okay, so bio rod, yeah, steel katana. Wasn't I? Oh no, I just got over Applejack. Right, right, right. Steel Claw, Steel Spear, Toxic Dagger, Frost Claw, Flame Claw, Thunder Claw. Yeah, that's fine. Those remind me though, Pinky, or oh, Twilight, switch to the Bio Rod. I want you to have the magic boost. Oh, and Espers. Let's, let's not forget to give them Espers. Twilight, learn how to burn things. Rainbow, learn how to... Like freeze things, Pinky learn how to cure, and Luna learn how to electrocute. Sounds good. Ah, eh, sure, let's check out the relic shop. What do we have? Jeweled ring, bracer ring, speed shoes. Nah, nothing we really need. We have to watch our bits actually, because we're going to need a lot of money for where we're going next. Okay, Earth Patrol. For the Vigor Boost, worth it. And again, Red Shaffron. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Winged Saddle. Mystic Salong. Wound Bit. Wasn't there a Pegasi helmet here? Yeah. Eh, I don't need that. I don't think. Well, hold on to the other silver stuff, because silver stuff is really good. We'll want it later, but for now I want the stat boost. Again, you know, just give them players options. Go with a slightly weaker armor piece for the stat boost. So now it's for our big band world, blah, 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 blah. our big grand world tour. Try saying that three times fast. 
I couldn't say it one time fast. Uh, first, we're gonna come back to Trottingham. And now the auction is open. And we start off with the talking chocobo. And there's a couple items in the auction, no matter what you bid, they'll always buy it, Lyra and Bon Bon. And there's Lyra jumping up and down to get attention. Sure, I'll buy a chocobo for 10,000 bits. And, like, people have suggested Diamond Tiara and Filthy Witch for these, to, for uh, the witch kid and his father, but... I think that uh, these like but Lyra and Bon Bon work because just the idea of Lyra getting excited over pieces of junk at an auction and convincing Bon Bon to spend exorbitant amounts of money on them to appease her that just seems to work. Like I think that's I think that's hilarious. You know, like can people hate that rich kid in the auction? Rightfully. Mm. Anyway, why don't we fast forward through this stuff again? I hope it doesn't take too long. But yeah, people hate the witch kid and his father originally. If I made it Diamond Tiara and Filthy Witch, they would just hate her too. But with Lyra and Bon Bon, suddenly it's funny. Uh, what now? Uh, pass. Wait a minute. Well, I'm gonna watch the whole thing. I may just cut this down if it's gonna take several tries. Yeah, cutting it down. Here we go. There's one, the Magicite Masquerade. Thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. Sure, fifteen hundred. And that you end up, no matter what the bidding, how the bidding goes, or if you choose to... What? No! Alright, alright, I'm going to get money. Alright, I'm back with money this time. But yeah, the, like I said, they will always ask you twice if you want to buy it, and the second time they ask is when you actually buy it. Doesn't matter what you say the first time. The bids will go the same. There we go, the Magicite Wind Whistler! This one is 10,000 bits to buy. Yes, yes. Come on, there we go. So, Wind Whistler... Oh, whoops. Wind Whistler, once a very defensive wrestler, cast protected show on the party, Teaches protect shell to spell. Very, very useful Esper. And there we go. I only took two more rounds to get the other one. Masquerade. There we go. Thank you. And Asquade, Im another defensive Esper, well, since status-wise, Image, Mute, and Berserk, and was... I just looked at it, I forget. Was that Death of Teachers? Cool. Alright, uh, we need a little bit of cash. So, 
Well, we're gonna board our airship. Next stop is to south. Right here. Why did I come here? Wait, this, is, this isn't where we need to go. Derp. Can I sell to get a thousand bucks? Sure. That works. And now we come up here. And there's a... You can't see him properly, but it's a diamond dog. And Morning Glory is a very powerful curative expert. Teaches cure, cure, region, remedy, and arrow. In the original game, she was even more broken. She taught like cure at a rate of eight, and cure at a rate of twenty, and region and arrow and race. She was just complete. Uh, Seraph was just completely broken. Okay, so with that under our belts, I just love flying the airship around, you know, it's cool. Time to go learn some party skills for Pinkie Pie. Now she starts off with uh, uh, Winter Wrap, which as I've explained way back in, part, in her part, I think it was part one, is actually the dance of Earth Blues, the cliffs. And she got the cave dance from the fight opening sequence, so now we fight here and she will get the plane dance. Way to go, Dashy. Do 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 not new party theme. And That seems better. Okay. So, we're gonna go further on later. Or like, when we're gonna have like, get into some prolonged fights in a moment. Another new party theme. And I'll explain then what Pinky's dances do. Wait, forgot. There's the first one. Another reason Pinky is so appropriate for Mog, the way she just starts off looking at the screen, dancing and laughing before jumping into place. Okay, one more we can get for now, and then we have a prolonged one to get uh, the one more after that. For this one, easiest place is to go to Griffinstone. Yeah, this is any building in a civilized area, like a town or a castle or anywhere, will work for this. Oh uh, yeah, these guys are still fairly tough for their level. Thank you! Luna, you still fail. And let's bust out one of the new dances.
There we go, that's better. I swear, as the levels start to increase and the percentage gain increases from equipment pieces, this is where you really start to see the difference in HP between characters. Like Luna and Twilight are the same level, but Luna has several has an HP boosting relic and Twilight has an MP boosting relic. You know. And on the other hand there's a raid, like look at the evasion stats. Boom. And now, the last one is a bit more involved to get, but that's okay, because I want redemption. You can get this one by either going to the Returner hideout, and going down the raft, down the river again, or you can come here and jump down the falls. Oh, my mistake. Not, not down the falls, rather into the uh, trench. Come on. Jump? Why not? While I'm here, I'm going to get those items I missed before. I want them. So, uh, anyway, Pinky's dances to explain them again. Pinky has eight dances tied to specific terrain. And, come on. Let's see. So, Wind Song is the dance of the plains, Toxic Tango is the dance of civilized areas, Thunderclap, oh no, Toxic Tango is the dance of the forest, Thunderclap is the dance of civilized areas, Fiery Frenzy is the dan party of the desert, Rock and Roll is of caves, and Winter Rap is of the earth, but she starts with that, so it doesn't matter. Let's see what I can get for Thunderclap. Ah, okay. It That's not... That's not bad at all. So yeah, so in the original game, Mog, he had, he, he, whenever he did a dance, he had a chance to succeed or fail, and if he succeeded, he would berserk himself. Pinky does not berserk herself. You can use a different party every turn. And there we get uh, the last one, the Water Rondo, which is the seventh dance. Can only be acquired in the World of Balance in the Super NES version because there's nowhere to fight in the water in the World of Ruin in the SCNES version. The GBA version adds the fight with Leviathan, so you can get it there. But yeah, so Pinky's parties and the original game Mog, when he danced he had a 7 out of 16 chance to do one attack, 6 out of 16 to do another, 2 out of 16 for a third, and 1 out of 16 for another. Pinky, I made those 2 and 1 attacks the same thing in version 2.1, so basically she has a 3 and 16 chance of doing the special attack. And generally, it's divided into support skill, um, with the 7 out, of six, 7 out of 16 and 6 out of 16 abilities are generally some sort of attack, normal attack, and some sort of buffing or supportive skill. And then the rare 3 out of 16 attack is a stronger attack or a supportive skill. And it varies depending on them. Toxic Tango's uh, 3 out of 16 is actually really strong. If I could get it off. Well, there's a normal one. The trade-off is that the normal one is pretty pathetic. I'm actually going to see if I can call up, just so I can recap. Uh-oh. Uh Ouch. Okay. Hang on, it's a sec. There we go, I freed up my mouse. Because I want to... Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, we... I can do this, I can do this. I just want to discuss what about party abilities are. This will be a little cheat sheet. So, Wind Song, she will randomly use Sandstorm, which is a powerful wind attack, uh, wind attack, Arrow Slice, which is a, uh, no, sorry, Sonic Boom, which is a gravity-based move, single target, 
or Arrow Slice, which is a powerful single hit wind move. Toxic Tango, she will use Toxic Mist, uh, which you saw weak poison damage and poison someone. Panacea, which heals the party's status ailments, or Plague, which does massive poison damage to everyone and inflicts sleep, sap, poison, and the pseudo-seizure status associated with the Phantasm attack. Whoa! Fiery Frenzy, she uses Blaze, Fire Damage, Dringer, Drains her HP from all enemies, and Atomic Way, Stronger Fire Attack. We're gonna get that she on her feet. Ow, ow. Do the Toxic Tango. I wanna see Plague. Cause I remember it is really strong. Oh. Stop doing that! You're annoying me. You're, you know what? I'm gonna burn you all. But where was I? Thunderclap uses Plasma, single hit, uh, lightning attack, overclock, cast haste gun the party, or wave cannon, uh, powerful lightning attack. Winter Wrap has Avalanche, Ice Attack on everyone, Snowball has everyone's HP, or Ice Rabbit heals the party a big amount. Ha, not this time. Uh, Water Rondo has El Nino, Water Attack, Life Stream, which is a new attack. It revives ca all the all KO'd party members, and Whirlpool, Single Hit, uh, attack, Water Attack, and inflicts some status ailments. Then there's Rock and Wall, which has Life Shaver, Earth Elemental Drain Attack, Pitfall, attempts to instantly kill an enemy, and Landslide, powerful single hit attack. And the 8th dance, there's an 8th dance of course, but we'll cover that when we get it much, much later in the game, because it was purposefully designed to be the strongest party because you can't get it until the World of Ruin. Or vice versa, whichever you prefer. So this is just the easiest way to get back to the airship. Once we've done this... Apparently if you do go by way of the... Oh, while I'm here I want to show this. Because I mentioned it before. Is it this way? No, it's this way. There is a way back to Nosh from here, I thought. Yes, it's up there. Anyway, um... So this is where... I'm, or maybe it's over here that there's the rock slide. Anyway. Um... So, I mentioned, um... You can also jump down the raft and the return to Hydra or the main force base, if you prefer. And that will also take you to the... Get you the Water Rondo. I believe it deposits... Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I'm gonna go back and get a new chocobo, I'll be right back. And I'm back! As I was saying, I'm pretty sure that if you jump on the raft in the main force base, it deposits you back here. And then you have to walk all the way down here through the Phantom Force. And jump down the falls to get to the Velt. And go through the Serpent Trench to get back to um, Na um, um, Alpalusa, and then board the ship, and that gets you to uh, Ponyville, and you, then you go through. It just seemed I never did it that way because it just seemed so much longer. And I'm thinking, well, you have to go down the falls anyway. This is a much easier way to do it. You know, it depends on where you leave the airship, where you can get back. Come on. There we go. And now we can go retrieve our airship with Pinky knowing all of her party moves now. Show off one of them, Pinky. I know there's ways to rig rim that set the slot skill, but I never bothered to learn how to do it, and I don't care that much really. I think that's cheating. Well, not think nothing, I know it's cheating, but you get what I mean.
Why did I do that? It's not gonna do anything. I'm stupid. Uh, game, uh, I mentioned that before Final Fantasy I could keep, but that game has the most ingenious thing ever where uh, soul attacks can have multiple elements and the but whatever element takes effect when the, the attack is used is whichever element will be most effective. So like there's the one skill meltdown, it's a, it's a fire, earth, and wind attack. If the enemy is weak to one of those elements, like if it's weak to earth, it'll count as an earth attack. If you have some ability that powers up fire attacks, it'll count as a fire attack. And it also means that if the enemy absorbs earth and wind, then it'll count as a fire attacks. And like, that is such a brilliant thing, you know, like, it means that uh, multiple element attacks are actually an advantage, because the enemy has to nullify all of them in order to nullify the attack itself. And it also means that a lot of attacks are, like, fire and not elemental, or wind and not elemental. So that if the enemy is resistant to that element, then it just does normal damage anyway. Wish you could implement something like that for this game. Because, you know, multi-element attacks. Not a thing in FS6, and the one that is, is kind of useless. Bars! Wait, is that what I think it is? Is it? Did I get it? Oh no, it's the random magicide effect still. Uh, the Bahamut summon effect, as it was in the original game, is removed in favor of something more MLP flavored, shall we say. And I would love if I can get that so I can show what it is. It was going to be the Sonic Rain Boom, but it is not. It's something better in my opinion. I will keep trying. If it takes me the whole LP, I will get Bahamut or oh, Bird. I know it's supposed to be a dragon, but it always looks like a bird to me. And being people are learning magic. Where? I just want to get to the airship. That is one downside of trying to balance the party members around the race. Like, the Pegasus are the fastest, but speed doesn't mean much in this game. I did a speed test where, like, in the intro of the game, the characters had 30, 40, and 50 speed. And even the difference between 30 speed and 50 speed just meant, like, their ATBs fills a couple seconds faster. In practice, it don't mean crap. So speed is a pretty useless stat in the game, all things considered. Which is really funny, because if you played the Super NES version of the game back in the day, Odin was one of the most valued Magicite pieces, and people would pointedly avoid upgrading him to Raiden because he was the only Esper to give a speed boost on level up. And I'm, and I'm older and I'm just thinking, why? Speed doesn't mean anything in this game. You know what? Upgrade him to Raiden and take the strength boost. Sure, there's like two or three other Espers that do it, but at least, you know, your strength is useful. To a point, anyway. Oh, though. Heh, <laughs> okay, that'll work. Good job, Pinky. Yeah, well, hang out in the caves. You must have experience with these guys. There's my airship. Okay. So, we have all of Pinky's parties. We have the optional magicite. We have Pinky herself. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that we need to do at this point? Hmm. Hmm, could fight that enemy, but no, we don't want to do that. So yeah, I guess there's nothing to left to do. You have to bring Terra slash Twilight for this part if 
If you don't have her in the party when you enter this town here or this area here, the party's like, no, we need her, and they refuse to go further. They turn back. And you get kicked out to the world map. Sorry, they had to cut my audio, got interrupted in the recording. Yeah, good thing nothing important was happening at least. So yeah, you enter this area without Twilight in the party, and the party, they just turn back. So I think we'll uh, call it a day here, rest up, make sure we're nice and healed for the next dungeon, which is one of the more boring and tedious and annoying ones in the game, but we'll take care of that next time on Philly Fantasy 6.